The fifth Hunger Games managed to do the impossible. Writing a big movie is like driving a car. If it's safe, cheap, and economical, it's going to appeal to everyone. Indie filmmaking is like a modded up Ford Fiesta, appealing to some, but not for everyone. But what happens when you combine the two? Well, you get this. A weird, uneven, but incredibly interesting product with a main character that is closer to Jake Gyllenhaal's Nightcrawler than Katniss. So in this video, we're gonna explore three things that make Cor... Cor... Corleo anus Snow both completely irredeemable and one of the most interesting characters in blockbuster filmmaking right now. And we're gonna accomplish this by cleaning up my house for some people coming over. It's gonna be a wild bash, you don't wanna miss it. So let's begin at the beginning. I know, a shock. The movie opens pre-10th annual Hunger Games, 63 games before Jennifer Lawrence volunteered her cute ass for all you lore heads out there. Here, Snow attempts to win a prize of money to help his family out of a tight financial space, which is point number one, the greater good, the greater good. and the golden egg a two for one. We all have a golden egg or two. In this very video, I said what my golden egg is to get this entire house clean by the end of the video. Doing this for a lead in a movie goes the same way. Giving your character a golden egg to lust after is massively important to create empathy for your audience, which in this first half of the film, the writers want to do. Who doesn't want to see someone achieve their goal? Especially if that goal involves something as relatable as money. We all want fat racks of money, obviously. But as the old adage goes, it's not funny if a homeless person falls down the stairs. They are already at rock bottom, and that just made them hit Minecraft bedrock. But if a rich person falls down the stairs, it's much more likely to be funny because it lowers their class. If you want to easily make your audience care about someone, give that character nothing. And I mean nothing. Snow can't make rent, he can barely eat, and he had to eat paste yeah. just to survive. That's nothing. This gives the character somewhere to go and something to work toward. In order to get the prize money to save his family from ruin, Snow needs to make this beautiful woman a winner. A great, relatable golden egg for the audience to want our lead to get. With this established, we are totally okay with him cheating, lying, and being sneaky in order to get that golden egg, because he's doing it for the greater good. The greater good. Shut it! Boom! Suddenly we have the entire audience in the palm of our hand. Not only do we want to see Snow win because of his living situation, but it also helps the audience explain away any possibly horrible thing he does because he's doing it for the right reasons, right? Right? That's something we'll get into more later. So stick around, because it's probably the most important part of the film. But first we need to understand something else important. Point number two, or the part of the film that actually takes place during the Hunger Games, and I'm calling it the mirror. We all know what happens when we look in the mirror. Oh my god. <laughs> we see our reflection. But what happens when you look into a film? Often what's reflected back is ourselves or our society. Something that can be pretty hard to look at when we aren't expecting it. Thematically, this entire film is about the relationship between audience, spectacle, and the people controlling it. Imagine you go to a movie that you can control. You can kill anyone you dislike, help people you like, and the people behind the scenes will make it happen. You're being controlled by someone on Netflix. What is Netflix? It's a bit of a morbid thought, but this is exactly what the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is playing with. If you had that power, more than likely, after this first act, you'd want to kill Peter Dinklage, Viola Davis, and anyone that gets in Lucy Gray's way. Leaving Lucy and Jon Snow alive huh? because they've built empathy with you. Sorry to burst your bubble, but if you were given this power, most of the wrong people would die. You've seen Snow jump into the zoo with the tribute. You've seen him sneak Lucy food, and you've seen him go out of his way to find ways for her to win. That's something a good person would do for someone they like, right? Well, maybe not. Another thing we'll explore more later. At this point, the audience watching the Hungry Games in the film loves them both, and the audience in the theater does too. The film at this point has done an incredible job of faking everyone out. We often only see what we want to see when looking into a mirror. Today, we might look beautiful. Our hair is on point, we don't have a zit in sight, and our teeth look whiter than ever. A great day for us. But then other days, we you might think we look like shit. This often simply comes down to how we're feeling on that day and may not have anything to do with how we actually look. Leading us to our final point, 
The joke is on us. The third part of this film after The Hunger Games is when the mask comes off and we, just like Lucy, can see how horrible Snow really is. This is the part of the film where he has to do increasingly horrible things in order to get a leg up on people. Reporting his friend and leading him to the noose or killing a woman to preserve a secret. Things that are much, much more difficult to justify. Finally, painting him for what he truly is. A grade A psychopath. The joke is on us for not seeing it sooner. You seem like a good man, Coralina Snow. Gotcha, bitch! You want to believe Snow is helping Lucy this much because he cares about her and her survival. Maybe he even tells himself the same thing, but he doesn't. He doesn't care who she is or what he means to her. He would have done the same thing for any other person he was assigned to. He only cares that she survives because it benefits him. If she wins, he gets a bunch of money and a good job but it all depends on her winning. So he tries to win at any cost. He brilliantly uses the audience and the people around him against themselves. As he says at the end, the world is the Hunger Games and it's survival of the fittest. He views everybody, including the audience and the people around him as expendable. Us too. Oh shit, I die. He's been like this throughout the entire film, but we haven't cared to look because he built trust with us. Just like he is trying to do with the public in the film and Lucy Gray herself. He wants her to sing because he knows the people will love her and want her to win, giving her donations and them an advantage. He knows Viola Davis won't say anything after he cheats because the games were bigger than before. The film shows his struggle because it knows we will relate and empathize with him, winning us over immediately. He and the film itself brilliantly find these creases in people's agendas and uses them to get an advantage. The joke is on us. In the end, he realizes through Lucy giving him a taste of his own medicine that he isn't doing this for anybody but himself. Once he embraces that, he becomes one of the most terrifying people in this universe. And the joke is on us for believing or hoping that he wasn't. Young man who is still troubled, but this time has kind of a goal and an aim albeit a dark one, and he becomes the dictator that we know him to be. The joke is on us for wanting people to die so that our favorite person can live. The joke is on us for taking the film at its word, only for the film to pull the rug and show us how wrong we are. Peter Dinklage may be a dick, but he's probably the only good person in the whole film. Remember when you wanted him to die? Joke's on you. But the joke continues even further. Here's a little bonus point for those of you who stuck to the end. The film aims to show the audience that even though we aren't doing actual real-life Hungry Games, we aren't that different. We come for the spectacle all the same. The biggest movies are often violent action movies. The things that make breaking news are fights, deaths, and accidents. The bigger the spectacle, the bigger the audience. And the film challenges us at the end to think about whether we were truly there to watch people win or watch people die. Let me ask you one final time. What are the Hunger Games for? No one's coming over.